kid in the 80s who loved robots that transformed, there were very few things more awesome than a bunch of smallish robots who obviously were a team on their own, unified under a central theme or maybe even a similar color scheme. And best of all, aside from being able to transform into their individual alt modes, they could also combine to form one bigger robot. In the world of Transformers, these guys were called Gestalts, or more commonly as Combiners. So when it came to Combiners growing up all those years ago, I had one. Not one combiner, but one member of a combiner team. That's right, when I was young, all I had was the Constructicon Mixmaster. But not the actual Mixmaster per se, but the toy from the Japanese toy line Diaclone that would eventually be brought over to the US as Mixmaster. But that didn't stop me from transforming my only Constructicon toy into his leg mode, envisioning it to be attached to a bigger giant that I didn't actually have and unleashing it on the rest of my Transformers, knocking down any poor character, friend or foe that was in the way. What can I say? For a kid, imagination is king. And it could have been worse, I could have ended up with Hook and just had to be content with parading some floating head and shoulders. Anyway, as part of the second wave of toys released in 1985, the Constructicons and their combined form Devastator was the first official combiner to be released in the Transformers toy line. And for some reason, my father, who was usually on point with getting me all the coolest new toys he would find on his business trips, missed these guys. Maybe it was the numerous similar bright green and purple robots and their small individual sizes that didn't impress him enough. Who knows, but like I said, I never got any actual Constructicons as a kid. Which is probably the reason why, despite an obvious push from the original cartoon and the comics, Devastator never really made much of an impression on me back in the day. He was just… there. Just another Decepticon for the obviously much cooler Dinobots to destroy. And it got even worse when in the following year, Hasbro introduced no less than 5 arguably cooler combiner teams into the line. And all of a sudden, the once imposing and unstoppable Devastator was getting his ass whooped by Bruticus in the cartoon. As a kid, I just couldn't understand how in 1986, Devastator was still wrecking havoc on Autobot City in the animated movie, while Autobots like Springer, who had better things to do than die that day, helplessly slingshot explosives at the Decepticon giant with little to no effect. Even the Dinobots couldn't stop him. I mean, Devastator? Really? Where the hell was Superion or Defensor? Of course, back then I had no idea how long it took to make an animated movie, and even if it was 1986, production actually started a lot earlier, well before the aforementioned Autobot combiners were even in existence. It would only be years later as a grown-up that I would gain a better appreciation for Devastator as a toy and as a character. As a toy, even from the start Devastator was quite a unique combiner. Aside from being the first, he was constructed quite differently from the later combiner teams that mostly followed the cookie cutter formula of being teams of five composed of a larger leader robot that formed the main body and four smaller robots that could interchangeably form either an arm or a leg which was referred to as scramble city type of play devastator was composed of six similar sized but unique decepticons sorry constructicons who formed a specific part of the combined form the team was composed of hook a snobbish engineer who transformed into a truck crane and the head and shoulders of Devastator, the violent bulldozer Bone Crusher and insecure excavator Scavenger both formed the arms, the very bad trip Long Haul, who due to his dump truck alt mode was more often than not relegated to transporting building materials and equipment instead of fighting, formed the mid torso, and the final two members who formed the legs were Mixmaster, who turned into a DJ turntable. Just kidding who turned into a cement mixer, the chemist of the group, who was often depicted as crazy, most likely due to his prolonged exposure to all the chemicals he would mix up in his drum, and the leader, Scrapper, who transformed into a payloader, the true brains, architect, and artist of the team. Anyway, since the original vintage toy, there were two quite notable modern versions of Devastator released. Well, sorta. During the very, very, very early days of third-party Transformers, Around 2012, a company called TFC Toys completed their attempt at a modern-day Devastator, which due to obvious legal reasons wasn't Devastator, but rather HERCULES! And granted that compared to today's standards, he doesn't look all that impressive. Back then, he was quite a big deal. Hercules was mainly significant due to the fact that he was the first third-party combiner made ever. Unfortunately, being the first, he also came with a very prohibitive price of well over $300. 
unfortunately, another company called Make Toys released a second option a few months later with a very creative and original name, Giant. And while he was smaller than Hercules, I thought aesthetically he looked a lot better. And I also liked his more palatable lower price tag. I came quite close to getting this guy during a moment of weakness and the need to impulsively buy something big. Unfortunately, the toy store was located next to a music store, and a fairly decent looking 12 string guitar caught my eye and eventually won me over. A decision I would eventually regret in the long run as the guitar actually turned out to be a lemon. Eventually though, I would finally get my very first actual, and may I add, official Devastator a few years later. Towards the end of 2014, Hasbro would launch their Combiner Wars toy line, which, if the name didn't give it away, featured mainly combiners. The line ran for a little over a year, and in that year, we got the main iconic combiner teams like the Aerial Bots, who formed Superion, the Protectobots, who formed Defensor, the Stunticons, who formed Menasaur, and the Combaticons, who formed Bruticus, all to varying degrees of success. Regardless of their differences, though, True to their original vintage counterparts, all these teams followed the same Scramble City play feature wherein all the toys were interchangeable either within the same team or outside of it. But before the line switched over to the next chapter of Titan's Return, Hasbro made sure to finish off Combiner Wars with a bang, and rightfully so with the very first ever combiner, Devastator. And true to the original Devastator toy, this new iteration literally broke the formula in many significant ways. First, the whole interchangeability was dropped, and second, instead of the usual larger Voyager-sized toy to form the torso and four smaller deluxe-sized ones for the limbs, all six Constructicons would be Voyager-sized, making the combined Devastator form literally tower over all the other under 12-inch combiners at 18 inches tall. Hell, he even towered over the aforementioned Make Toys Giant and TFC Hercules. And unlike the other teams, whose members were sold individually over six wave releases, all six Constructicons were released in one box set. The upside being, you basically got the entire Devastator in one go. If you were willing to pay the price, that is. Fortunately for me, at the time of its impending release, I was about to celebrate my one-year wedding anniversary with my wife. And so when she asked me what gift I wanted, I knew exactly what to say. I believe it was at this moment holding my very first Devastator in my hands that I finally got it and what made this particular combiner special. Yes, he was bigger, but he also looked more imposing in his design. More importantly though was that Devastator lacked a sense of order and polish that the other newer combiners had with his non-symmetrical design and mismatched limbs. He almost looked like a Frankenstein and well, monstrous transformer. And granted that construction vehicles aren't quite as exciting as, let's say, jets, sports cars, combat vehicles, and rescue. Okay, sorry, I'll take a bulldozer over an ambulance any day. I do love the ironic twist of the uniting theme of the individual Constructicons being agents of creation and building, while their combined form is basically a major instrument of destruction. Anyway, this Titan-class version of Devastator led me to one important realization. I needed more Devastators in my life, specifically one for my Masterpiece display and one for my live-action movie display. For my Masterpiece shelf, there really was just one option for me, Constructor from the third-party company Toy World. Now, when Toy World first announced that they would be making a Masterpiece-class giant Devastator sometime around 2014 or 15, I scoffed. Yes, he did look good, and the working treads on both Bone Crusher and Scavenger were a nice touch, but I thought that there was no way I'd get that. He was just too big. Fast forward a few years later though, with a practically complete G1 Decepticon Season 1 Masterpiece lineup on my shelf, the need for a suitably large Masterpiece Devastator became a reality, and no, the Hasbro Titans Return version would not cut it. By this time, Toy World's Constructor was recognized by most collectors as the king of all third-party combiners. He was the biggest and ironically the most stable thanks to the use of an extra dedicated lower torso and thigh piece. While others didn't like the idea of a parts forming combiner, the trade-off was a giant that would not fall over from its sheer size and weight. When I finally decided to go get this guy over two years after the initial release, he was only available as a repackaged box set with a very hefty price tag attached to it. I hesitated and went back and forth with my decision to buy constantly bugging my friend 
a seller who was setting up the pre-order as to when the absolute last deadline would be for me to confirm my order. Eventually, he probably got tired of me asking and so one time, he just casually but flat out said, Oh, I already pre-ordered it for you. Silence. I was dumbfounded. Then he followed that up with, So how did hearing what I said make you feel? Did you feel a sense of dread or get excited? If your reaction to my statement was a negative one, then don't pre-order it. But if you got excited, then do it. And that's how I ended up biting the bullet on a constructor. A decision I have not regretted ever since, even if, a few years later, both Bone Crusher and Scavenger each lost an arm, broken off at the bicep mushroom peg joint due to a faulty plastic. A repair project I have yet to get around to. The massive combined form remains unaffected and will be one of the main centerpieces in my masterpiece display for years with no intentions to switch them out, even if there appears to be a new challenger or two in the horizon from the usual suspects. X-Trans bots with their own desecrator and my usual go-to company fans toys both look pretty promising although for x transports i didn't quite enjoy their menasaur as much as i thought i would and i am still waiting for them to finish their defensor and as for fans toys despite their proven track record of high quality releases the jury is still out on whether they can actually make a proper combiner at all and before anyone brings it up in the comments yes i do know that mmc is also doing a devastator and I'm sure it will be awesome. But just like their Bruticus, this will be on a smaller scale and so I'm not even considering it. Now for my Bavers collection, it got a little bit trickier. Now I get it, the Bavers has its many, many, many faults. Especially with the fact that actual good storylines and personalities of their characters are almost non-existent. And their designs are quite controversial as well. You either love them or hate them. I myself love them. And I did quite enjoy the fact that the Constructicons and ultimately Devastator were the main attractions for the second movie. I didn't mind that the Constructicons were basically devoid of any personality. I just loved the fact that their designs were all sort of perversions of the traditional human form, which included Devastator, who looked more like a cross between a gorilla and a vacuum cleaner. I love that Baver's Devastator takes the whole non-symmetrical, chaotic design up another level from the original. Unfortunately, Hasbro kinda half-assed the Revenge of the Fallen toy line, giving us just a handful of Constructicons, ranging from an overly simplistic demolisher to the just mid and uncharacteristically svelte long haul to the overly complicated and headache-inducing Mixmaster, who collectively could not merge into Devastator. To accomplish that, Hasbro released a separate toy, a decently sized toy that unfortunately just broke down into a bunch of non-transforming construction vehicles. The closest they came to an actual Devastator construction combo toy was a teeny weeny tiny whiny legend set, which while minuscule and simplistic actually featured seven transformable Constructicons that merged into Devastator. It was also to my recollection the first time the other Constructicons on the team were fully revealed in their robot modes, which in itself was cool. Of course, this would serve as nothing but a fun little fiddle desk toy at best. It would be years later as part of the Studio Series line wherein Hasbro would finally give us a set of 8 fully transformable Constructicons that could combine into a Devastator. But by this time, I was already out on buying retail Baver stuff and had opted for a larger scale collection composed of movie masterpiece or oversized but oftentimes improved Studio Series knockoffs. And it's the latter option that finally gave me the final definitive movie masterpiece version of Devastator. Unlike the Combiner Wars Devi or Toy World's Constructor, which were both completed with one single big purchase, I patiently played the long and risky will they won't they actually finish game with these guys, taking over two years to finally complete my set. And if we're being completely honest, I'm still waiting for the heavily rumored add-on kit to further improve the combined form. But even if that never comes, as is, I am perfectly happy with this Devi, scrotal wrecking balls and all. Anyway, as you all know, the toys of course are only half the story. But before we get to the other half, you do know how devastated I would be if you don't let me know who your favorite combiner is in the comments below, right? Okay, fine. I'm just being overly dramatic. But do say hey, as any engagement, good or bad, ultimately helps the channel and helps me tell more stories. Oh, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. But if you already did, thank you. Now on to the second half. So not counting the live-action movies, Devastator and by extension the Constructicons haven't had much groundbreaking characterizations through the years. In fact, 
in the original cartoon, the Constructicons have been the recipient of not one, not two, but three conflicting origin stories. The first had them literally constructed on Earth by Megatron. The second placed them on Cybertron as peaceful beings and creators of the most beautiful city on the planet, Crystal City, and close friends with its guardian, the Autobot Omega Supreme. And so the story goes, they are corrupted by Megatron and given the ability to form into Devastator. They go on to betray Omega Supreme and destroy Crystal City. And just as if that wasn't confusing enough, a third origin had them present even way back, flipping on the first origin and having them be the creators of Megatron. So yeah, I guess if you really tried hard, you could make some sense of all of this, but I'm not even gonna try. One thing worth noting is that apart from the original six Constructicons, there have been other members included on the team at different times. The first would be Road Hauler, or Hauler for short. In the first episode of the More Than Meets the Eye miniseries, after getting shot and falling into a deep ravine, the Autobot Hound is rescued by Ratchet, Cliffjumper, and what looks to be a second season Autobot Grapple. Of course, at this point, Grapple didn't actually exist, and Cliffjumper refers to him as Hauler. And since then, Hauler was a thing. Smelling the opportunity for an easy buck later on, the eventually released Grapple toy was given a neon green paint job and was thrown in with the Constructicons. Granted, as a former member, as he was able to avoid being corrupted by Megatron back in Cybertron. The second notable new Constructicon would be introduced in the Transformers animated series. Initially, only two familiar named members are introduced, Scrapper and Mixmaster, who would come to life due to some all-spark shards getting implanted into a pair of construction vehicles. And while at first they were pretty decent bots who only cared about chugging down oil and befriending the Autobot bulkhead, they were eventually swayed to the dark side by Megatron with the promise of more premium oil to guzzle in order to build his space bridge. They are eventually joined by a third Constructicon, the comically diminutive Dirt Boss, who transforms into a forklift. He had the special ability of shooting tiny drill-tipped remote control devices that could bore into its targeted machines, including other Transformers, granting him control over their basic motor functions. So yeah, basically becoming the boss of the other two Constructicons. Eventually, all three Constructicons are separated from Megatron, and Scrapper actually ends up stranded on Dinobot Island, where he befriends the Dinobot Sla- I mean, Snarl, and they actually go off on an adventure with Repgar to combat Soundwave. Okay, I know this all sounds kinda hokey, but I stand by Animated being possibly the best written and most entertaining Transformer show ever, which makes it even more devastating that this show was unfortunately and abruptly cancelled before more Constructicons could be added or their combined form Devastator could be introduced. But it was planned to happen had the series continued. Anyway, the final two members worth noting were added to Devastator in the IDW comics. After the events of All Hail Megatron, with the Decepticons defeated and essentially on the run, a very vengeful Spike with Wiki goes full vigilante mode and tracks down the Constructicon Scrapper and kills him. Having been blinded by acid and trapped underneath some steel beams, completely helpless, Scrapper surrenders to the human. Unfortunately, Spike is not taking any prisoners and proceeds to blow away the helpless Constructicon's head with his own weapon. Despite being dead though, Scrapper's body was recovered by his fellow teammates and still incorporated for a time into Devastator, literally giving him a dead leg. Which is a nice callback to my previous observation of him looking like a Frankenstein creation consisting of dead robot parts. Nice. Later on, however, the Constructicons were modified into a more modular design, moving Hook down to take over Scrapper's leg, allowing any other properly modified Transformer to plug in as the head. The original intent was for Megatron to be that Transformer, but not willing to be a test subject himself, the Autobot Prowl was secretly captured and mind-controlled by the Insecticon bombshell to become the new head of Devastator. And thus, Prowl Estator was born. Eventually though, Prowl was successfully separated from the rest of the Constructicons, but comically, having really enjoyed being merged with a logically superior Autobot, the rest of the Constructicons offered to join up with Prowl instead and leave the Decepticons. This on and off Prowl Constructicon partnership would continue for a while up until Devastator's loyalty is finally won over by the Decepticon leader, Starscream. Actually, to be more accurate, the leader of all Cybertronians, the Chosen One, Starscream, who incorporates his ever-loyal Primus fanatic and former Autobot, Scoop, into the Devastator equation, 
in order to mind meld and influence the rest of the Constructicons to be loyal to him. And so I guess you could say that that is the latest scoop on Devastator. And while I'm not the biggest fan of Scoop, whom I find quite annoying and dull, his toy has inexplicably remained in my collection all these years for the sole reason that he holds a little sentimental value to me, as he was one of the few Transformers I bought on my honeymoon. And speaking of which, if you want to know more about another Transformer that I got on my honeymoon, you can jet over here, or if you want other Transformer stories, you can fire a click over here. Either way, thanks for watching and I hope you come back for more. <laughs>